Trading Nut, episode 106. And they'll kind of induce traders to make it look like it's breaking out. So they'll get traders to, to buy, to buy, to buy. And what market makers are just doing is they're, they're creating more liquidity. They're getting traders to, to go in, buy that pair. And then once they have, there's a lot of uh, volume, they'll basically pull price so late. The market's going to do something. Your job is not to fight it. The market never, ever runs away. It's always there. That personal diary of trading will make you a much better trader than... I could be right about the direction, but wrong about the trade. Don't focus on the monetary side. Trying to make too much money on a trade is what I have seen killed every trader. Your losses offer you some of the greatest insight you can find into your mistakes. Relax. Learn the process. And it looks like pattern trading is a freaking trap. Don't be in a rush to become a millionaire. Let the market tell you what the market wants to tell you. This podcast is not financial, trading, or investing advice of any kind. What's up traders, welcome to another installment of the Trading Up Podcast. I'm your host Cam Hawkins and today we've got Nick Nachonaki here on the show. Now Nick uh, has got a unique story to tell us. He discovered this thing called the Market Makers Method, if you've ever heard of it, secrets that helped him flip 3,000 to over six figures in eight months. Now you're going to hear that story today along with the trials and tribulations that got him there. Uh, he also has created a platform off the back of what he learned over the six plus years that he's been trading. Uh, he's only a young guy, but he's been doing it for a while. Uh, and you, you can get access to that. There should be a link underneath this video or the podcast, depending on where you're listening to this story that Nick's about to tell us. Now, guys, um, do remember uh, talking about offers. There is another last ever offer that is gone now it is gone for my robot builders club that is it they i am done with offers on the robot builders club it's now just going to be if you want to come in learn how to build robots let me know and or don't even let me know you just got to go on there have a look have a play with the free robot i give away uh do the free training that i give away as well and see if it's right for you see if it's something you want to learn how to do trust me this thing is a game changer because it makes your trading way more automated even if you're not going to trade fully automated there's also so many uh, avenues you can open up around um, being able to uh, like one of the clients that I've got at the moment Scott he he created a, a robot that does well over the last five years and he's got it up there on mql.com and uh, and he's selling that there for I think a couple of hundred bucks so a few of those you make the money back on the course anyway so uh, there's him there's also Nathan who uh, you've seen featured on the show created an entire seven figure business out of this uh, uh, just building robots which only takes a few minutes and it's rows when when you start getting going with this thing so guys uh, worthwhile checking out if you're interested in that sort of stuff at least check out the free training over there and grab the robot that i'm giving away with it as well now the just to give you an update we're starting the new year here i've been on holiday i've had a fantastic week away uh i was we did i counted it up i did nine swimming spots from uh, river river pools like really cold river pools to lakes the biggest lake in new zealand uh surf beaches i think we might have done four different surf beaches this place called cathedral cove go and check it out amazing amazing place it's i think voted one of the top two beaches in the world uh so they go and check that out also go and ch- uh, the other thing i did was oh that's right it was a it was a a harbor like a wharf sort of um swimming area as well just amazing i love the water so this is just perfect for me also perfect for my cold water uh, therapy as well which I'll tell you what, I've been doing tons of that over the summer here, and it's been fantastic. So, guys, um, I know if you're in lockdown, you're probably going, oh, man, if only I could do that, get out of my house. Uh, look, you know, we're just a bit lucky here at the moment. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen with this COVID thing, but I'm, I've got a funny feeling we'll be going in lockdown at some point in the future uh, this year as well. Now, um, what's happened in the meantime on Trading Nut? Merch is back on track, so there was a bit of a stall there. I thought I was going to get uh, it out the door before the end of the year but i didn't unfortunately it's back on track though along with a new trading nut logo so stay tuned to keep an eye out for that uh, i've got a ton of new things that i want to try out this year uh, one thing that i think and i mentioned it before i think is going to be great for everyone involved listeners traders alike uh yeah, so that's a whole lot of stuff going on here. I'm not going to spoil it now. Just stay tuned, stay subscribed, uh, and then you'll find out about it in the future. So without further ado, do remember we've got that offer here with um, with uh, with Nick. And uh, also, funnily enough, I should mention that Nathan, who I mentioned before, is now sponsoring the Trading Up podcast. So you're going to hear that coming up uh, in the middle of the podcast. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys, here we go. 
interview with Nick, let's do it. Whether you're a struggling trader or a profitable trader, our sponsor, City Traders Imperium, are offering you the chance to become a fully backed Forex trader. That's right, get coached and funded with CTI today. All right, folks, here we are on Trading Up. We've got Nick Nishaughnessy here on the show from Markets Makers Method. Uh, welcome to the show, Nick, all the way from over there in Florida where you guys are in the midst of, is it another lockdown, I believe? <laughs> Yeah, you know what? Actually, no, we are not. Uh, we are not on lockdown right now. Oh wow! Well. Uh, it seems yeah. to be chopping and changing depending on what part of the world you're in. I, I can't keep track of it anymore. Um, yeah. How are things over there anyway? Things are awesome. Uh, be- beautiful weather. Obviously, it's one of the reasons why I moved over here from Chicago. Is the weather? It's relaxing. Bought myself a, a condo here, so just you know, just relaxing and. Uh, preparing for this trading week. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. A lot of people do make that move just for the warmer weather. I know a friend of mine was over there or lives over there, and he sort of he was stuck in Buffalo, and he he was desperate to get to Florida, and he couldn't get a job there. In the end, he got he got closer. Mm. He ended up in yeah. Kentucky. Um, now, look, today we're going to jump into your trading story before we mm-hmm. we hear a, a little bit about a, a tool that you've created that other traders might be able to benefit from. It, it looks. It looks like a really nicely thought out way to help improve somebody's trading and save them a whole bunch of time. So um, we'll jump into that in a video and we'll, we'll shoot that after the show. But um, today we, we want to hear all about you, your trading, um, how you got into trading first. And so do you want to start off with that story? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, I just actually turned 22. So I'm still uh, quite young to a lot of people's, in a lot of people's eyes, I guess, but I don't know about that age is just a number to me. Um, But yeah, I I started quite early on when I was still in high school. And I, I knew that, you know, that going to like a regular nine to five and, you know, wanted to be my own boss. So at that point, you know, I was just looking for, you know, my passion, what I wanted to do. I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur, you know, always knew that was going to start a business or do something. So um, I was actually playing uh, tennis as well. And one of my tennis coaches was a, um, was a trader himself, actually. So that's actually how I initially got into Forex because he was a Forex trader. But that's kind of where it all started. And then I was, you know, it was in high school. Um, my parents were overseas, so I was living with a friend. And, you know, at that point, you know, I'm young and got right into uh, Forex you know, and from there, just studying, you know, Googling everything, YouTube, and just, it was my whole uh, education journey that, you know, eventually led me to, to here, but there's a lot of, um, a lot of ups and downs, you know, blew, blew some accounts, you know, lost, lost money, just like most people do initially. And, you know, just not, not giving up and just keep going at it because, you know, I've met successful traders. I know that, I knew that there's a lot of successful traders out there. It's just, you know, I got to find, I got to find the right information, the information that these guys know. And yeah, that's really the past six years of my career is just always been bettering myself, but it's not only, it's not really recently in the past two years um, where I took my trading to the next level. Um, I was able to go full time and just, um, you know, con- continue on this path and, you know, it's, it is truly my passion and that's why I kind of, you know, just innovating in this industry now, you know, I've, I've made my, you know, I've made my money and all that and I have all that set. So now I'm just really trying to, trying to better the industry for the, you know, for the new traders, trying to innovate in this industry and just trying to make it a lot better, get, get rid of all the scams and just, you know, it's, you know, I have a passion for this industry, so it's really personal to me. So, yeah, yeah I mean, that's... I want to dive back into yeah. some of the story. So, so uh, your tennis coach, I mean, was this guy a, a good trader or was he a professional trader yeah, outside was, of being um, a tennis coach? He, yeah, he, I, I actually, you know what, I had to ask him just because I always need to know this number. I was like, you know, so what kind of numbers are you, are you trading, are you doing? And, yeah, he, he said that most he did was 30 lots, and he said that he consistently trades, like, 25 30 lots of trades so that's you know i did the math there and if if you're catching just like you know 
few hundred pips a week or even a hundred pips a week. It's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty good numbers. So that's when I realized I was like, all right, I'm, uh, I'm going into this industry. <laughs> and so was he doing tennis coaching as like a, uh, as hobby? Yep. That was, yeah. Okay. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Fair, fair enough. And, um, and so, so this guy, you, you obviously got you into it, but I mean, did he give you any advice, education or anything like that? No, nope, not at all. That's that's only how I found out about the industry, and everything else was just twenty four seven every day, like thousands of hours of just studying and and uh, you know trading from myself and figuring it out on my own. And, and how did you how did you figure it out? Because I've heard some great stories about people, you know, um, discovering this stuff for themselves. I mean, how did you go about trying to unpick this market? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, obviously, like I said in the beginning, I was blowing a lot of accounts. You know, I had a couple hundred dollar accounts, you know, lost those. A couple thousand dollar accounts, I lost those. And, um, you know, obviously, I had to figure out why I was losing. Um, And it wasn't – so I basically ran into um, something called, like, the market makers, uh, market makers trends. So I just kept on um, learning about, like, market makers, and it just kept on popping up and – you know, I, through my studying and through everything, I figured out that, you know, that Forex currencies, a lot of it's, there's a lot of price manipulation, right? There's a lot of um, big banks controlling the price, uh, moving the markets whenever they want. Uh, and these are market makers. And essentially there is a way to, you know, to kind of follow how market makers move price. And uh, a lot of it is something called a stop hunt. And a stop hunt is basically a an extremely volatile uh, price movement to one side, just to induce traders to, you know, let's say on euro US dollar. Um, typically, they do this on London opening and New York opening, where right when those sessions open, they'll uh, they'll move the market, let's say, uh, to the upside, and they'll use long candles, like 20 pip candles on the 15 minute time frame, and they'll kind of induce traders to make it look like it's breaking out. So they'll get traders to, to buy, to buy, to buy. And what market makers are just doing is they're, they're creating more liquidity. They're getting traders to, to go in, buy that pair. And then once they have, there's a lot of uh, volume, they'll basically pull price away completely in the opposite direction. And they'll form an M pattern. And they will, there's a lot of uh, stop losses that they'll hit of retail traders just to gain more liquidity for themselves. And that's essentially in a nutshell, you know, when, when you see those uh, crazy volatile price movements, right, they blame it on economic news, uh, you know, NFP and all this. But in reality, this is actually uh, market makers uh, releasing a lot of their liquidity and manipulating the price action. So it's interesting we've had that uh, we've had the M and W's mentioned on the show, I believe it once before. Only once uh-huh. in this many interviews, and I mean, I, I, funnily enough, noticed them so much more now. And ironically, it fits quite nicely with the way I trade. And when I see them, I know that okay, I've got a better chance of of getting in this trade and it being a winner than if I don't. Uh, I mean, is why did you why did you sort of land on this? Out of there's so many different ways to obviously, you know, trade. Why did you land on this one as the one that, like, I'm? Yeah. I think I've found it. This is the one. Well, I'm not going to go I'll, any further. I'll, yeah, I'll tell you quickly. Is because um, I was I was looking into it, and there's a lot of free resources that I found online about it. How they'll you know go 25 pips up, they'll do the end pattern, and then they'll you know reverse the price New York session. And and I basically I didn't believe it, right? Because when when you hear like, oh, the mar- the markets are rigged. Um, so, you know, big banks are just controlling price whenever they want. However, I didn't believe it, but when I actually went to my charts myself and I saw it with my own eyes, that was when I started to believe it because I looked at the live price on my own charts, you know, from yesterday or from a few days back, and I saw those M and W patterns, and I saw exactly how they'll they'll spike it, you know, extremely volatile. Uh, short-term moves and then they'll go the opposite direction i saw it with my own eye and therefore you know that that there's the truth right there so 
and then and then I went for the next few years just mastering the strategy and, and trying to see what else I can I can find about these markets and you know I, I learned a lot throughout those years. So it's, anyone can can go on their charts themselves right now and they'll see on the 15 minute chart and on the one hour chart on the four hour chart they'll see M and W patterns. Yeah, look, and you do you do see them, and it's funny, like you know, I don't know how many years I've been looking at charts for, but to then start seeing them regularly, uh, and the fact that they do tend to be the start of a move, and if you can spot it early enough, you can you can get in there and and make mm-hmm. the most of it. Uh, so, okay, so you sort of said that you know in the last two years, you know that's when you've you've uh, really sort of mastered this. I mean, how did you? Was there a point in time where you were like, you know, I suppose. We flipped over from not really getting it or you know blowing accounts. What what was the change? How did that sort of transition to, to, to becoming a, a master at this market makers method happen? Yeah, it was. I mean, it, it was really because. Um, so I initially then um, took took like a few months off, and I didn't trade at all, and I was just demo trading at the time, and I was learning, and I was figuring out what my signature trade was going to be and just making sure uh, next time I, I start, I'm going to use risk management and I'm going to really take this uh, professionally because trading is a business and you should treat it like one and not, you know, go crazy with your account. So it was really just being disciplined, being a disciplined trader. And then I started with uh, $3,000, uh, which I actually borrowed from a mem- family member from my aunt specifically. Um, actually mentioned that in one of my other interviews too. And, um, and then after, uh, eight months, I took that, uh, 3000 into over six figures. And that was kind of, um, once I got to that point, uh, six figures, that was when, you know, I just continued on that path and I just continued on, uh, growing, growing my account, you know, growing as a trader, continue to use risk management and, you know, after that, I didn't have any urge to to take any massive positions on for no reason, and I just I, I just stayed disciplined. You know, I just remained disciplined trader, and you know now and now I'm here. So that was that was the big that was the big leap right there. Is is those eight months? That was the leap. Just jumping in here with a quick message from my sponsor, Sage Capital, who provide education, software, and tools needed to increase anyone's ability to trade more successfully. Perfect for people who are either still learning, too busy, or just want to use professional-grade strategies to build passive income. They've achieved high returns with relatively low risk and are available for auto-copying today. Go to sagecapital.co.uk and start auto-trading today. And, and can you walk us through the eight months? I mean, how many trades were you placing during that time? Um, mm. and, and how did you compound that that $3,000? Yeah, so I actually used a risk management calculator as well. So I was like, I was, I was full on like professional, right? I was calculating no more than 2% per position. And I was kind of keeping track of all that. Uh, typically, it, you know, I learned to not trade every day as well because you can't force trades. Not every day is a trading day. So, I mean, it was typically it was about one trade a day. I would uh, trade during London session and I would just trade those M&W patterns. Um, sometimes I would just trade with the trend as well. Uh, that's that's what I created uh, Dashboard for, was actually just hopping on those uh, trends instead of having to wake up during London session. But they were, they were typically intraday trades, you know, 25, 30 pips, 40 pips. Uh, if it's pound pairs, maybe 60, 70 pips, depending on the day. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for those M&W patterns, London, London open. Um, you know, I take my trade. Um, and when I'm satisfied, 20 pips, 30 pips, I'll close the trade and go to bed. Because for me, London session was, you know, 2.30 o'clock, 2.30 in the morning. So I was waking up and then I'd probably go to bed by like five in the morning uh, after that one trade that I was looking for, the stop hunt during London session. Mm, yeah, it's it's uh, interesting. I, mean, I, I, you know, I didn't realize that you guys had to get up so late to, to trade that London session, whereas I was thinking that I've got it, I've got it bad over here. In fact, I've got it really good. It's like six 
to 7 p.m. at night to, to do oh, London, wow. which is which is <laughs> awesome. Um, I mean, but when I had like, young kids, it was no good because that was witching hour where they where they needed a lot of attention. Now, uh, so what is your so you, you created this thing called Dashboard now. Let's sort of just touch on that. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll explain this more in the video. Um, we'll go and have a look at it. So how did you come up with it and what, what does it do? Yeah, so basically the story is is that um, I was initially going from those in, intraday trades, uh, waking up during London. And there's, there's something called in the market maker's method, the strategy that I trade, there's something called market maker trends or market maker cycles. And these are basically, um, these are basically like three to five day trends or uh, sometimes more. They're basically the real trend in the market. And I figured if I can just um, ride these trends, so if I can just place swing trades and ride these trends for, you know, hundreds of pips as a swing trade, um, that's really all I needed to do because I wanted to have more free time. You know, I wanted to, kind of be more relaxed. So I started on creating, um, putting all the criteria from what I've learned in the past six years, my career, all the different, uh, different uh, patterns and criteria that create a market maker cycle, which is quite complex. And I, and I um, got a team of developers and I initially coded this for myself. It was just a standard MetaTrader 4 indicator uh, just for my own trading. Uh, and eventually, you know, I gave this tool. So I started using it on MetaTrader 4 for myself. Had a lot of success with it. I gave it to my students who are struggling with still understanding the market maker trends and understanding how to, um, you know, how to find them and how to trade them. So, and I told them this tool automates that completely. It does it for you with with uh, really high accuracy. So I gave it to them and they just... You know, their reactions was priceless. They it changed their trading career, and they basically begged me to make it public because they said that it would just help a lot of traders. Because you know, one of the huge things that traders struggle with is identifying the direction whether to buy or sell. Obviously, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So you know, I was okay with that, and I knew that this was. This was my thing to do. This was my awakening to to innovate in this industry, right? To make it to make it better, to get rid of the scams, and to just have a, a something that a, a professional tool that everyone will enjoy, a universal tool, something that helps with direction. Uh, so I went ahead and composed that from uh, from my students begging me to do it, and so I yeah, so I turned it into a software that you know, that you can basically subscribe to and you get everything, but in a much uh, upgraded version than my old MetaTrader 4 indicator. This is completely on our own servers. And, you know, it's a it's, it's just a whole atmosphere of traders. We've got thousands of traders in the community. We have uh, full-time analysts who are using Dashboard full-time professionally, and they're actually sending out trade ideas and so, in a way, I believe that I've already changed the industry, and you know, it's it's just getting better, and so much feedback. So, just trying to spread the word out there, help other traders. It is interesting, because hey, I think it is one of the biggest issues facing uh, any any sort of new trader or uh, aspiring trader is, is trying to pick the overall trend or overall direction correctly. And because if you don't get that correctly, right, and you you start to look for a three to one trade, you, you, your odds are already pretty much screwed. You might get one to one if you're lucky, but or even anything mm. above one to one, you're sort of really you're pushing, right? Because you, now you're going against the overall trend. So mm. this, I mean, I've had I've had a look at it the last few days. Uh, I've only had a brief look at it, but from what I can see, it, it it looks like a very well put together tool that that could help a lot of guys who do struggle with with trend. And as I said, we'll, we'll have a look at that again in a video uh, and we'll get that up on the YouTube channel. So uh, not for the podcast, but... Um, so what, what I want to do is jump away from that now and talk a little mm-hmm. bit about you using... I guess you're using the tool still uh, and... Well, maybe you're not because you, you know what, what goes on behind it. But what does your trading look like these days? I mean, how many uh, how many trades are you taking a week? Yeah, I'm, I'm taking like one to two trades a week now. So 
definitely a lot more filtered um, just because I have a lot less time on my hands just because I'm doing a lot of things now. And so I've, I've set it up. I usually take my trades during Asian session now, right after the dashboard updates. So the dashboard updates uh, once a day. It's at the end of New York session on a new day. And I w- I'll wait for that. So that's going to be uh, 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. So that's my time. And I'll take a look at the charts during Asian session around 7 p.m. my time. I'll scan the currencies. I'll choose one to two best uh, currencies via the dashboard. And I'll have my trade ready for those. And I'll typically, nowadays, I don't really even wait for a pattern anymore just because, you know, from, from so many years of trading, you... You know, you you get to see those patterns with your own eye and you're trained to see those patterns in the structure. So I place my trade, you know, I set my stop loss, my take profits, and I just really just depend on dashboard nowadays. So it's one to two trades. Typically try to do more of like a swing trade. And I, you know, I I check my trade like once a day. You know, I'm not one of those aggressively uh, people who check their profits like every 10 seconds because they're, they're trading so big. I'm sure you've ran into that before. Well, I've ran into it myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, so what? What about like risk to reward on that? How does that usually play out for you? Yeah. Um, I, I typically try to go for at least one to two. So one one risk and two two profit. Um, but for me, I don't really calc. I don't really depend too much on it. So I'm not very uh, particular about it. So I'm not going to. If it's going to be like a one to two or one to three, uh, I'm not really going to make a decision based off of that if, if everything else lines up in terms of the direction and, you know, if I do get on a pattern or not. So typically it's always it's always a positive risk-reward ratio, but I don't really, I'm not too particular. And uh, and what about like winning percentage? How often do you win out of those one to two trades? Yeah, I, w- I would say it, it's mostly all of them winning. You know, as crazy as that sounds, um, it's typically most of them. Now, I do have losing trades, of course, but it's it's definitely like a lot more. Like I would say, probably like eighty percent if I were to put a ratio on it. And obviously, if you know eighty percent, if you have a high risk reward ratio, it's, it's it's really good numbers. And and when you're placing your stop, because I think that's obviously quite key here. Is I mean, how do you how do you find a, a location to to put that stop that yeah. you know you feel that it won't get hit? Given the fact you're sort of you know going in in Asia and you're just you know relying on the dashboard for the trend and you know you just letting sort of things play out. I mean, how do you how do you identify a spot? Oh, so I I'll just use the dashboard. So I'll just put it above or below the the peak formation, right? So if I made a peak formation low, then I'll just put the stop loss below that. Um, the bottom of that trend, wherever dashboard. Indicates. Uh, okay, because you're because you're entering quite early on in the trend, aren't you? Yep, yep, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I know that you know if the dashboard says that this is a a new locked in trend, I'll just put the stop below that trend and let that trend ride out. Yeah. So so guys, just so you know, so there's like about I don't know how many pairs there are. It looks like there's maybe thirty pairs on this dashboard, and. Uh, you'll be able to correct me uh, and you basically sort sort by the ones that have got the newest established trends and then mm-hmm. you just so therefore the trend might only be one or two days old so therefore yep. you can put your stop quite close to the you know where that trend got established which you can see on the chart and mm-hmm. whereas some are like you know 10 days into the trend or five or four days into the trend so you're steering clear of those and you're going for the sort of the easy pickings of new trends started Let's get in, tight stop, start of the trend, unlikely to come back, and then your two to yes. one's pretty simple. Okay, nicely done. Yep. Really simple stuff. So so um okay, cool. And we know yeah, we know how many instruments you're trading. And so when you're actually doing your own analysis on the charts, are you looking at any specific time frames or are you just you know, you don't yeah, need to... one, I'm looking at uh one hour. One hour time frame and the four hour time frame. So I'm more longer time frames. Time frames. Okay, cool, cool. And like, 
thinking about your journey up to, to where you are now, like what do you think made you different from somebody else who's gone in and you know they're either working a day job or um, they're just a mum or dad trader out there what, what, trying to get into this game? What do you think made you different? Well, I think honestly, it's it's my ability to adapt to you know where we're at in the markets right now. It's 2020. I would say like. Honestly, 70% of the market, maybe 80% of the entire market is now um, quantitative, right? It's, it's, there's a lot of algorithmic trading going on with big banks. There's a lot of hedge funds that are now implementing um, AI algorithms. They're not even touching a, touching a single button anymore. They're not trading manually. So it was my, my adaption to adapt to these new markets. And so I was able to understand this. And so I... Put that into consideration and that's why you know that, that's why i created dashboard as well because i know where the market's going with you know i know the future of the markets so i you know so i always listen to my i always listen to my dashboard i always listen to my rules so i'm somebody who who never goes against my rules and that thing that's what kept my discipline as well uh in those eight months that i did those six figure numbers it was the discipline, like I said, and that's because if I have rules, I, I never go against those rules. And and do you think, just sorry, uh, like when, this is something that's come up in the last couple of interviews, uh, and I'm just wondering if it's a common theme here. When Do you think when, when you've sort of made that much profit on a on a balance that, mm-hmm. you know, you've now, you're now playing with profit and you're no longer sort of, I suppose, emotionally attached to that money, is it easier to then just not feel get rid of some of those emotions that that traders might be experiencing oh yeah that that's that's probably one of the biggest benefits that us full-time traders have is that it's not like if if this trade if if this trade doesn't go our way you know i don't have money for rent right that's that's the mindset that you almost like never make it. it it's so hard and the fact that you know, I, I place my position, I use my risk management, even using risk management, you know, that trade is enough for me to be full time. And I have absolutely no emotions because I know that the worst thing that can happen is I'll lose like 2% of my account balance, which is like nothing, you know, I'll, I'll make that back on the next trade. But for others, you know, it's, it's even hard, like trouble even sleeping sometimes. I remember when uh, I had to rely on that income from trading and it's sleepless nights. So it's, it's a huge advantage. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I thought it was cause it's, just, it's come up in the last interview I, well, one I did yesterday. Uh, and I was like, Oh, I wonder if that's a, a common sort of thing where you get to that point where you've made that profit. Uh, I know that some people just will destroy it because they they just get the greed the greed kicks in, but eventually they get there and they go, okay, well now I've made that much money, I'm not going to lose it again. Um, if I just trade two percent, that's all I need. I don't need to be greedy. Now, um, what about uh, if somebody was working a day job? How do you how would you sort of give them a, a roadmap to get into becoming a, a successful trader? Yeah. Um, so I would definitely recommend them to to trade like trade like for example if you're if you're in the states I would recommend to probably try to trade maybe Asian session or try to trade a session where you're available uh, depending on if you're doing intraday like if you're nine to five it's going to be hard for you to trade New York session because you're at a job in the morning so I'd recommend you find the best time to trade. And I'd also recommend like, you know, fig- figure out a strategy that doesn't require you to look at the one minute chart, rather try swing trading, something where it's more of a long-term trade. That way there's less stress to it. You know, so I would say try, try to aim for longer, t- uh, bigger time frames for sure to get into it. Nice. Okay, cool. And and what about looking at a chart? I mean, what things would you recommend somebody start studying on a price chart? Yeah, uh, for sure. Just candlesticks, naked charts, candlestick patterns. Look for doji candles. Look for bullish, bearish, engulfing candles. Learn the basic fundamentals of the candlesticks. And that's going to go a long way, uh, especially if you have a, if you have 
a method of determining uh, direction, then you can go into smaller time frames, maybe like the one hour time frame, and you can just really trade based off of candlestick patterns uh, combined with you know a direction. It's it's very accurate. Really, that's that's all you need, and that's typically you know how I started, and that's it, it's the way to go. Really, it's. You know, candlesticks, naked charts. It's the best for beginners. It's interesting, eh? Because it's uh, it's something that I've heard in the past. Like, you know, some people will just you know swear by it and go, "Oh, you know, these candlesticks patterns work." And others have come in and gone, "No, the candlestick patterns are just bollocks. They don't work." Um, you know, these are just sort of retail. It's retail thinking uh, and all this sort of stuff. I mean, is it a case of they? I mean, like I. I know they can work, right? They can work, but the percentage is, is probably quite low on a on a raw just looking at the candlesticks alone. So are you saying that with the with the dashboard and, and knowing the trend, all of a sudden they become a lot more powerful? A lot more powerful. This is the way I, I always tell traders is look, there's there's two ways there's there's two ways to be a successful trader. There's two things that you must have. Number one is direction you need to know which direction are you buying or are you selling and number two where are you entering timing right timing or slash entry what's your entry criteria why are you entering even though you know it's bullish so you combine dashboard it gives you the direction number one is checked off number two let's say you see a w pattern there's your number two there's your entry criteria Boom, you enter in on that W pattern. Dashboard told you it's bullish. And right there, you have a full strategy, and that's exactly what I do. So right there, as you can see, going from just candlesticks, combining it with dashboard, you have a you have a complete strategy. Nice, nice, nice. Right, so what about a mindset? So there's obviously, you know, the, the getting into a trade and all that sort of stuff, but do you have any tips or techniques that you've come across in your six years that that have helped with your mindset or could may help somebody else with their mindset yeah um i I think for sure mindset is like the most important and the way what so here's a few tips that i've learned along the way is um always pay yourself something so this is this i actually learned this from another trader as well is Okay, so let's say you, you have any account balance. It doesn't matter what it is. Something substantial, and let's say you're, you're generating profits every single week. You know, you're, you're positive. I would recommend, one, is pay yourself a little bit. Withdraw some of those profits and buy something. Buy something physical. Buy something physical that you can put on your desk and that you can look at every day to remind yourself that slowly you're doing a great job and you're making profits. You're making progress in your trading career. You know, and you bought something from those profits and it's, let's say it could even be like, you know, I bought myself one of those uh, Wall Street bulls and it was like a, it was like a gold statue, like a a five pound gold statue. And I put it on my desk and, you know, every time I looked at it, it reminded myself like I bought this with trading profits. So it keeps you in a positive mindset. I think that's a really big tip that, that helped me. Yeah, I like that. I, and I actually, I think I saw that, that in your video for some reason, or, or somewhere I saw that saw that bull on your desk. Um, now, what about what about recommending? Uh, actually, I really like that tip. It's a really good tip, and it's something that I've never done, so I, I might actually think about doing it. Now, um, what about if you had to recommend somebody spend the next month mastering something? What would it be? Yeah, um, you know, I think. Yeah, that's that's a tough one. Uh, I would say so. Is would this be a brand new trader? They know nothing about the markets. Uh, this could be like yeah, just somebody either brand new or, or um, just something that you think is worthwhile going off and studying. Yeah, um, for sure. It, I think there's. I would recommend that you do look into market makers, and you do at least. Um, kind of do more research in terms of like, I would say 
understand the markets a little bit better, maybe understand a little bit like what market makers, what role they have in the markets. Um, I would also recommend reading a few books, but honestly, I think every, every trader's um, like development and figuring out, you know, their path to success is, is so unique. You know, so I, I've met a lot of traders who's, who never read any trading books before. And then I have another friend who has read like all of the books, like Market Wizards. There's a lot of like, good trading books out there for mindset. Um, but honestly, I would just say get started now and, uh, you know, have the charts opened, start demo trading, start, just start trading. It doesn't matter if you're trading real money, if you're trading demo, but you just have to, you have to, you have to do it. And, and the longer you trade, regardless if it's real or, or, or not, you're just going to get in the habit of it. You're going to train your eyes to see the patterns. And uh, like I said, it, it took me four years. And then those last two years was when I took off, you know, to where most traders want to be. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a long-term thing. It's not overnight. If you think about it, you know, a doctor goes to school for, you know, 10, 10 years of their life, you know, to make that salary. Do you think that as a trader, you'll, you'll make a doctor salary in one month. You know, I don't think so. So it's, it's a long-term thing and just, just keep at it. That's kind of to summarize. Yeah. For the next month, what they should do, you know? And guys, if you're looking for a starting point there, I mean, we got some great advice in a recent show with uh, a trader called Jacob, who um, I don't think he uses this method, but similar. And his advice was just to go onto Google, uh, type in market makers method, and then go to the images tab and you will find, and I've just done it here myself, you'll find a whole bunch of images explaining how it works. And you can just go through those and sort of work it out yourself. Um, so it's a nice little tip to to get you guys educated up on this stuff pretty quickly. Now, uh, we're going to jump into the quick fire round here. Nick, so how long did it take you to go from newbie to consistently profitable? Yeah, um, three, three to four years. What's your favorite entry setup? Uh, my favorite entry strategy, you said? Or entry setup. That would be a M or W pattern on the one hour time frame. What strategies do you use to exit or manage trades? So my exit strategies is typically at a support or resistance zone. And that's where I'll take my profits. Um, and then typically it, and then I'll put my stop loss to break even after I hit a certain amount of pips to secure that trade. What's your recommended trading book or resource? Oh, um, I would recommend baby pips. For beginners, go through their free education school, babypips.com. Do you have a a preferred broker and trading platform? Uh, Trading platform, MetaTrader 4, got to stick with that. And broker, I do recommend uh, the most regulated Forex brokers, uh, so oandaforex.com, just to be safe. Uh, Do you want to walk us through your worst ever trade? Worst ever trade? That would be, it was a, oh, this was actually one of the first trades. So I think I lost, what was it? Oh, at the time it was like $4,000 $4, on one trade in like 30 minutes. It was a, uh, a gold trade. I was uh, shorting gold and it just, it was like a 300 pit move to the upside. And I, I lost like four grand and that was like my whole account. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> If you could leave our listeners with one piece of advice, what would it be? It would be think think like a market maker. Don't think like a retail trader. Nice. Well, look, before we wrap up, what's the best way for the traders to get hold of you? Yeah, so um, on, our, on Instagram, it's at market makers method. And then we have a YouTube channel as well. Uh, we have a lot of free educational videos there that's market makers method as well and then uh market makers method.com and you can learn more about some of our student success and uh really just take a look at a dashboard changing the whole industry 
Cool. Well, look, a big thank you to Nick for sharing with us today. Everything we discussed here, along with all the links, are in the show notes. To find them, simply search for Nick in the search box on tradingnut.com. Until next time, I wish all my listeners trading happiness and success. Okay, folks, hope you got a ton of value out of that interview there with Nick. Now, do remember, there should be a coupon code you can use to get his Market Makers Method dashboard. I've had a play with it. It looks really good. Uh, there's a number of ways you can trade it, and the funny thing is what uh, what Nick has shown us in a video that you, just, you can go and watch if you want. We recorded it after this interview, an exact method on trading uh, his market makers method and oh geez, you could use it with anything really um, but the, he's got an entry method that you can use with it which goes hand in hand so guys go and check that out link underneath the uh, sorry in the podcast player if you're on your phone uh, or somewhere on the actually should be on the page if you're on the site and if you're watching on YouTube uh, how are you going to find this oh, look it'll be the next video that comes up alright okay folks uh, thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next one <laughs>